everybody, I'm Cale Prindle and this is Words from the Muck. Today we're starting a three-part series on Ray Bradbury's Fahrenheit 451 to explore his use of imagery, metaphor, connotation, and world building. We're not going to get into any spoilers or anything right away. In fact, today we're only going to look at the first page, but here's some stuff that you're going to need to know. Guy Montag is a fireman in Fahrenheit 451, but in Fahrenheit 451, firemen don't put out fires. Instead, they start them. So at the beginning of this novel, we find our main character burning up somebody's house and everything they own, and he's loving it. So let's take a look at how Bradbury's setting up his character in this first scene. It was a pleasure to burn. It was a special pleasure to see things eaten, to see things blackened and changed. With the brass nozzle in his fists, with this great python spitting its venomous kerosene upon the world, the blood pounded in his head, and his hands were the hands of some amazing conductor playing all the symphonies of blazing and burning to bring down the tatters and charcoal ruins of history. With his symbolic helmet numbered 451 on his stolid head and his eyes all orange flame with the thought of what came next, he flicked the igniter and the house jumped up in a gorging fire that burned the evening sky red and yellow and black. He strode in a swarm of fireflies. He wanted above all, like the old joke, to shove a marshmallow on a stick in the furnace while the flapping pigeon-winged books died on the porch and lawn of the house. While the books went up in sparkling whirls, and blew away on a wind turned dark with burning. Let's start with connotation. Connotation is all the connections and associations we have with a word. These associations are built up over time within a given culture until people hear one word and immediately think of the associations instead of the official definition. Connotation can bring up new ideas and emotions that add to a scene or even to an argument. For example, we're told with the brass nozzle in his fists, which seems like a very simple line, but when we remember to ask ourselves why a writer would choose his or her words, we have to ask ourselves what would be different if the line said, in his hands. In his hands sounds too gentle, because when I think of hands, I think of them open, passive, maybe even gentle. But this is a guy who's burning up somebody's house. So Bradbury uses fists because that's more forceful, it's more intense, it's possibly even violent. There's a hostility showing up here because of the word fist that you just wouldn't get the same way if you used hands. This is in contrast to the next reference to Montag's hands, those of a conductor in front of a symphony. This is the gentleness I'm talking about. Now his hands are coupled with this power of metaphor to give us a sense of beauty and art. Connotation is a constant in Fahrenheit, and I would argue pretty much anywhere, you know, that words show up. Because a lot of things have thousands of years worth of meaning and significance behind them. Which is why, like, the snake metaphor tells us almost everything we need to know about Montag and the world in which he lives. So in case you missed the memo, snakes are, like, always bad. Always. Very, very few exceptions. If a snake shows up in a book, just assume something bad or evil is about to go down. Because from the Garden of Eden to Slytherin, they pretty much always represent something that's at least kind of evil. So Bradbury plants a snake image in the first page, and it creates a pretty clear sign that Montag's job, the system of government, all of it, it's just no good. Now, Bradbury is metaphor crazy, and it's important knowing that going into this book that you will always have to rethink whatever you just read. Because this metaphor, and others like it, is doing double duty. Montag is holding a hose, so calling it a python gives it the sense of like its literal shape, its weight, maybe even its texture. In short, the metaphor is used to build the imagery of the scene as well as everything else. But the connotation of a python is one that crushes and robs you of your breath. Pythons aren't venomous, so I'll mark that against Bradbury, but you know, it might get a pass because the fact that it is a snake image, that's probably more important than getting his snake trivia correct. But there is something weird about the opening of this novel. I mean, a lot of the imagery kind of clashes together. Because on one side, you have pleasure and marshmallows and the symphony and fireflies, but on the other one, you've got like fists and snakes and dead pigeons and the literal burning of somebody's house. Now, if that all seems to be in conflict with each other, then you probably have a pretty good understanding of what Montag is about to go through in this novel, because the juxtaposition here shows the inner workings of Montag's mind and soul as he questions the rest of his reality. This page presents a paradox that Montag's gonna have to struggle with and wrestle with and eventually resolve by the end of this novel, and it's that paradox that makes this a great opening. Thank you so much for watching Words from the Mug. Pick up a copy of Fahrenheit 451 and join us here next week as we continue to talk about how Bradbury builds his dystopian world. Please like and share this video and subscribe to our channel. We really appreciate it. And until next time, farewell good people.